So, Michael, this is where dead men come back to life. It's been nearly ten years. Oh, but you'll keep for another day or so, huh, old friend? You mother... Grand Theft Auto V will be a decade old next year, and though Rockstar has confirmed that a new installment in the series is finally in the works, it's no surprise to anyone that there's still plenty of life left in GTA V yet. The perennial seller shows no signs of slowing down and is now available in remastered form on the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S as well. As you prepare to dive back into Los Santos and its eventful and bombastic single-player campaign, here, we're going to recap and recount the game's full story. GTA V is set in the year 2013, or the vast majority of it at any rate. The game kicks off with a crucial prologue, however, taking us to the year 2004, with two of the game's three main protagonists being featured, Michael Townley and Trevor Phillips, who are part of a trifecta of thieves with their partner, Brad Snyder. As GTA V kicks off, the three of them head into what seems like another routine robbery at first but things quickly spiral out of control. It turns into a bloodbath, and soon the police get involved. Trevor manages to escape, believing that Michael was killed during the escape and that Brad got captured by the cops. The truth, however, is something else entirely. Unbeknownst to his partners, Michael made a deal with the Federal Investigation Bureau, or the FIB, to agreeing to turn over his crew in exchange for witness protection. Brad is killed during the escape, and Michael gets a fresh start, but what's officially and publicly stated is that Michael was killed, and Brad is serving a life sentence in prison. We jump forward nine years later, where Michael, as Michael DeSanta, is living a completely different life in Los Santos. He has a wife and kids, and isn't lacking for finances, with FIB agent Dave Norton keeping a close eye on him and everything he does. This is where we meet GTA V's third protagonist as well, Franklin Clinton, a low-level gangbanger who works for a corrupt car salesman. As luck would have it, one of these jobs sees Franklin being tasked with repossessing Michael's son's car, and their first meeting, as such, isn't exactly under the best of circumstances. In spite of that, however, the two quickly form a friendship, which is further strengthened when Franklin later helps Michael rescue his son from a gang of thieves after a shady sale went wrong. Soon, personal problems in Michael's life start having a ripple effect, kicking big things off in motion. When he finds his wife with her tennis coach, Michael and Franklin chase him to a house in Vinewood Hills. And in a fit of fury, Michael not only trashes the place, but literally pulls the entire house down the side of a cliff. A cathartic act of vengeance in that moment, to be sure, but one that ends up proving to be a costly mistake. It turns out that the house the two of them destroyed didn't belong to the tennis coach, but to Martin Madrazo who initially puts out a hit on the pair. After the two of them escape with their lives, though, Madrazo tells them that he expects to be compensated for the damage they caused if they want to stay alive. Pressured into making a large sum of money quickly, Michael is forced to re-enter a life of crime and joins forces with Franklin as his partner. They reach out to Lester, a hacker and an old contact of Michael's who used to plan and execute robberies with him and his crew years ago. With his help, Michael and Franklin successfully rob a jewelry store and use the money from the heist to pay Madrazo. But though their debt is paid off, other problems soon rear their heads. For starters, Trevor soon re-enters the fray. He's been making a living as a low-level drug dealer and manufacturer out past the outskirts of Los Santos, but when word of the jewelry store heist reaches him, he quickly puts two and two together, realizing that it was Michael who pulled off the heist and that he didn't die nine years ago, the way he'd been led to believe. Trevor heads into the city and tracks Michael down. Their reunion is, as you might expect, uncomfortable and almost explosive. Though after that initial burst, the two agree to stay in touch, or at least see how things go, if nothing else. But Michael's recent decision to re-enter a life of crime is not without consequences. Those consequences soon rear their head, and FIB agent Dave Norton tells him that by getting involved in criminal activities again, Michael has broken his deal with the FIB, which, in turn, has brought Norton himself under a little bit of heat as well. In retaliation, Norton coerces Michael into doing off-the-book, not entirely legal operations for the FIB, while Trevor gets roped into the whole mess as well. These operations include assassinations, torturing someone who turns out to be completely innocent, and more, while many of these jobs also seem to involve either infiltrating and sabotaging the Internal Affairs Agency or the IAA, a rival intelligence organization. All the while, Dave Norton and his superior at FIB, Steve Haynes, 
have Michael and Trevor under their thumb, and the pair carries out these jobs as they're told to. Eventually, they finally get to a point where it feels like for now they might be in the clear again, with the FIB at least temporarily. A good chunk of GTA V from that point forward is focused on exploring the individual antics of its three protagonists. Franklin gets in all sorts of messes with his good-for-nothing friend Lamar, which involves conflicts with rival gangbangers and various jobs for Lester that suddenly see him earning way more money than he ever has. Trevor, meanwhile, spreads chaos wherever he goes and ends up making what seems like a bucket load of enemies. Rival dealers, the triad, motorcycle gangs, street gangs, and even Meriwether Security, a powerful and ruthless private military company. Michael, meanwhile, ends up finding himself smack dab in the middle of Hollywood as the producer of a movie, and his work there brings him in conflict with Devin Weston, a billionaire venture capitalist who, incidentally, also has quite a few FIB agents in his pocket. Meanwhile, Trevor, Michael, and Franklin all frequently work with each other and with Lester as well, which, as you'd expect, involves pulling off a number of heists, and that culminates in a bold and ambitious plan for one last score robbing the gold bullion reserve of the Union Depository. Planning and preparations for this one final heist begin, and Michael, who has reconciled with his family, begins preparing himself to re-enter a peaceful retirement after the Union Depository job, but other, more urgent circumstances soon pull attention away from it. Trevor soon comes to him with another proposition, that they break Brad out of prison. Michael, of course, knows full well that Brad has been dead nine years, and knowing that Trevor is dead set on enacting this prison breakout, Michael realizes that he has no choice but to tell him the truth, that Brad is dead. From there, Trevor quickly figures everything out, that Michael ratted him and Brad out nine years ago for a deal with the feds, and that Brad was buried in secret in the grave that's supposed to be Michael's. Things heat up, as you might imagine, and soon Michael and Trevor have each other at gunpoint. They're soon interrupted, however, and attacked by the Triads, who, as you'll remember, have their own beef with Trevor. While Trevor himself manages to escape, though, Michael is captured. Though Trevor wants nothing more to do with Michael and would be happy to see him die, Franklin and Lester manage to figure out where the Triads are keeping Michael, and together successfully rescue him, killing several Triad gangsters in the process. Michael, however, finds that his troubles are far from over. Soon afterward, he's contacted by Dave Norton, who tells him that he needs to do one final under-the-table job for him and fellow FIB agent Steve Haynes, following which he'll be a free man. The job is to break into the FIB's headquarters itself, hack into its servers, and erase evidence of the many shady and illicit activities of Steve Haynes and Norton. With Franklin's help, Michael does so successfully. Once the job is complete, however, Haynes ends up betraying Michael, and he soon finds himself in a tense standoff where multiple groups are out to get him for several reasons, including Haynes himself, Meriwether, and the IAA. In this chaotic firefight, Trevor, who wants to ensure that the only one who can kill Michael is him, arrives in the nick of time to help him escape. In the aftermath, however, the two agree to put their grudges aside for one final job and decide to go through with the Union Depository job after all, and then go their separate ways. Even with some pushback from Meriwether and the cops, the heist is successful, but while you'd think that would be the end of things, it turns out there's one final complication that the trio must get through. Franklin is approached first by Haynes and Norton, and then by Michael's Hollywood rival, Devin Weston, with one former pair telling him that Trevor needs to be put down, and the latter demanding that Michael be killed, each with reasons of their own. From here, GTA V can end in one of three different ways. Franklin can choose to kill Trevor or Michael, following which he loses contact with whichever of the two is left alive. Alternatively, he can choose to kill neither of them. That, one might say, is the canon ending. Together, Michael, Trevor, and Franklin choose to truly put all of their differences aside and go all in on enacting one final elaborate plan that will end all of their enemies. The three of them work together, and though things are bloody, they do just that taking all of their enemies out of the equation, including Haynes, Weston, the Triads, and the rival gang members. Once all of that is done, Norton is more than happy to wipe their records clean and let them truly go free, following which they return to their lives, decide to lay low, and remain in touch with each other. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. 
Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.